Jeremiah chapter 14. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dirt. Now, if you take the R, you get death. You take off the D, you get earth. Death in the earth. No food, no water. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, been burnt, destroyed. And the cry of Jerusalem is going up. You find this in Lamentation. And their nobles have set their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water, there's been no rain. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and convert and covered their heads with ash and sackcloth. Good morning. No drink. You know, they went to the community well. There was no piped in water. You know, as they, uh, the little ones, child labor, Ooh. or the women. You find children or women going to the wells to get the water. Ooh. How mean. Listen, if you do it, if we do it the Bible way, you know all America has done in her inventions and kitchens and plumbing? Made people lazy. So it's done. I guarantee you, you would take women that lived in these days of Jeremiah and Rachel and uh, Rebecca who got the camel's water for uh, Abraham. I, mean, I guarantee there was no weight issue. Because, I mean, if you're carrying water from a well at home back and forth, I mean, I guarantee that you were pretty good build and you could do a lot of things. You were healthy. And you were a hard worker. And if you didn't work, you didn't get no food, you didn't get no water, you didn't get the postman giving you a check. Everyone had, even the children had duties. Now, I'm not saying there should be no play time for children, but... A lot of the children, their playtime was very few and probably just the Sabbath. The Bible speaks of when you wake up in the morning, that's when the sun's up, and you come home from work when the sun goes down, and then you go to bed. Because the ground is chapped. It means it's, it's dry, cracked. You've seen pictures. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. They're in mourning. You're not going to go to the ground and plow it because it ain't going to do nothing. A shame. No food. No labor. No blessing. Yea, the hind also calved in the field. She gave birth. She gave birth to a baby's uh, veal. I mean, baby cow. And forsook it. She left her calf behind. She walks out, gives birth. The calf is there. And then she goes away. I'm not going to care for that thing. And I understand from what little I do about cows on that. Mama cow is very supportive to her baby cow. I mean, that's what really the milk of a cow is for, is for the calves. That's the thing that, you know, the calf just doesn't go off on her own into a proper age. Well, here, against nature, mama leaves the, leaves the animal behind because there was no grass, no food, no water, no food. Why? Thirteen chapters of sin. And animals are suffering. You know, you, you sit there and say, oh, protect the whales, protect the owls, protect and your own sins are going to drive them to death. If I don't know, but if America ever became dearth, I guarantee those people that love the spotted owls will have them for dinner. If that's the only thing you can eat. What did what did Satan say to God? Yea, <clears throat> all that a man has, something like that, he will give. I'm not quoting that verse completely. You will do anything not to die. That saved the whale if it washes up on the on the shore and you're hungry and there's been no food. I think you're gonna have whale burgers. 
I think you're going to flip those turtles around and have turtle soup. Now, I'm not going to say, I don't know about America, but if it came to, listen, America, it's not always going to be fast food restaurants. But here are, pe here are people and animals suffering because of sin. The curse is upon the ground, Genesis 3. Do you know why a snake bites you? Because of the curse. You know why you have rodents and, and, and bugs? Guaranteed because of the curse. Mosquitoes were, there was no two mosquitoes on the ark. You say, well, where are they? They were the larvae in the water. Like with the fish and the whales. The wild asses did stand in the high places where they worship other gods. Even Balaam's, Balaam's ass tried to, when he saw God, fell down, ran against the wall. And I forget what the third one was. Stopped, I think it was. The asses are where men are worshiping fallen gods. They snuff up at the wind like dragons. You know, well, sniffing the air. It's the only thing they got. There's no food. Their eyes did fail. They become blind. Because there was no grass. They're sniffing, trying to find food. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, that's the problem. Do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. There's the problem. There is the dirt. El Nemo, uh, global warming, uh, too many ships in the ocean, too much carbon dioxide. That's not the problem. Sin and iniquity. Iniquity is the problem. Oh, how, oh, the hope of Israel. The Savior thereof in time of trouble. Why shouldst thou be a stranger in the land? Because of sin and iniquity. And as a wayfaring man that turns aside to tarry for a night. Here's a guy, I mean, he's, he's going somewhere. It's nighttime, he just pulls off to the side of the road somewhere and just falls asleep. Now, Jeremiah is not saying God sleeps, but where are you, Lord? Did you turn off the side? Did you take an exit? you look for a motel? Aren't you supposed to be on the highway coming to us? Aren't you supposed to be riding a horse? Why shouldst thou be as a man astonished, as a mighty man that cannot save? God can save. But Israel, well, Judah and Jerusalem does not want to be saved. You can witness, listen, I've been witnessing to my dad since, since I was saved, April 21st, 1987. If he doesn't want to get saved, I can't do nothing. And it's between his heart and God. Yet thou, O Lord, are in the midst of us. God's all around, even in sin. And we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Wait a minute. If God's in the midst of us, but leave us not, his presence is not there. But God, you know, listen, God's omnipresent. Oh, I go out in the trees and the forest and all that. Yeah, God's omnipresent, but he's not there in the tree. Like he's not here in Jerusalem. It shows you, you can't go everywhere and God be there. 
even though he's omnipresent and listen, that, that's a that's a blow away study just like the Trinity. You can't explain God being there, but he's not there. Thus saith the Lord unto this people. Thus have they loved to wander. Wander, you, you, you have nowhere to go. If I say, I want to walk, I want to leave my house and walk to the convenience store. I have a purpose. If I want to walk out from my house and go to the playground, I have a purpose. If I get in my car, I want to go to church, I have a purpose. If I'm at the beach, I want to go home. I have a purpose. But when you're just wandering, you just here, there. Where are you going? Nowhere. Where are you, why are you going? I don't know. They have not refrained their feet from what? Just walking. They're walking, but they're not going nowhere. It's a treadmill. You just walk on that thing, you can put 400 miles. Where did you go? Nowhere. You're still in the same spot. NASCAR. You go around 500 laps, and where do you end up? The same place you started. You just blew many tanks of gas and tires and waste of time. A basketball court. You bounce that ball back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, for what? Football, you run back and forth between goal and goal and yards and yards. How many yards are run in a football game and to what purpose? None. What is getting, you know, a grand slam? How many grand slams would you please God at the judgment seat of Christ in your lifetime? How many RBIs will God be approved of at the Great White Throne Judgment? How many times have you run around those bases? I don't know how I don't know what the mileage is of those of those bases, but how many and for what purpose? America's wondering. We see people when we go down to the Ocean Walk and on Atlantic Avenue there. They just drive around in circles, drive around in circles. We see the, we'll be there for two hours. We'll see the same car five or six times. What are you doing? You're just wandering. You have no aim. You have no purpose. And you know what you do? You waste energy. You waste resources. You're just wasting time. That's what the Jews are. They have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord does not accept their, them. Where are you going? I don't know. Are you walking to God? No. You know, when Jesus Christ was born, he walked to Calvary. And yet he went to cities and towns and, and villages and all that, but he walked to Calvary. There are people who were born today who walked And you get them in a, let's just say, usually one a hospital bed or a convalescent home. And you get to where they are, you know, they're, they're the oldest age they can be. They say, what did you do in your life? What aim? And if you did it not for God, you didn't do what God, you did not do what God told you to do. We read in the last chapter last night, it's good for nothing. I ran all the Boston Marathon. For what? What's that do for God? How many miles is that? That's a lot of miles. There are people that break records. For what? God says, the Lord does not accept them. God, I put that hockey puck in the net 5,000 times in my career. For what? God, I walked 400 old ladies across the street. What? For what purpose? I don't accept it. But if I walk in Jesus Christ, 
it's accepted and it will be rewarded but that which is done for Christ will last he will now remember their iniquity and there's, a, there's that word again visit their sins you don't want God to visit your sins first, first John 1 9 that verse is put there so you will not be judged And it may be death, it may be sickness, it may be troubles of mind, it may be anything but what you want it to be. When God comes knocking at your door because of your sins, you may not know who you're opening that door to, but you're going to open that door. And if it's not under the blood, God is not going to pass over you. And he'll send whatever spirit, whatever correction and judgment into your say, go get him. I didn't see no blood. Then said the Lord unto me, Jeremiah, pray not for this people for their good. Jeremiah seven sixteen, Jeremiah eleven fourteen, Ezekiel, I mean Exodus thirty two ten. you imagine a holy God telling you don't pray for your people? Jeremiah, these are, these are his people. These are his relatives. He's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. you imagine God tapping you on the shoulder and saying, listen, I've had people, I, I, I pray for God. I don't know how God said it. I, I can't explain it, but I've got to say, no, don't. I've had that happen with people. No. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to that. And there are people who are on my prayer list who are falling away. Every once in a while, I run across their name in the Bible, and sometimes that name is just passed over. You know, you talk about forgetting to pray for somebody. You, you talk about somebody not praying for somebody. You're talking about God saying, "Don't you pray for them." And that's someone you really need to pray for, but God says, I'm, I'm not going to listen. You know, that's hard. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offerings and an oblation, I will not accept them. They're going with the motions of religion. As it's happening in 2015 in all America. Listen, I'm picking on America. <coughs> Jeremiah matches America and America matches Jeremiah. You know how many people are going to wake up tomorrow morning and do a religious act just to be worshiping God? You know how many people we meet on the streets to come up and quote the scripture, quote the Bible, even from the King James Bible, yet do nothing for God? I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword, war, Babylon, and the famine, and by pestilence. Now I don't want to be a I don't want to be a wicked prophet or anything like that. I don't know. But I know a group of people that are coming up who are rising up and they use a sword. Literally use a sword. Now, they're going to take over America? I have no idea. Maybe America will get in another war. But America is not going to stand in her sins. I will tell you that. God will put judgment if he tarries upon America. I can say that 100%. What the judgment will be? I have no idea. And God may tell missionaries abroad, don't pray for that country. I won't hear them. And when they go to church Sunday morning, I won't listen to them. And when they put their money in the basket, I won't mind it. And when they cry for me from the from the pulpit and cry for me from the prayer all this and that, I won't hear them. You are in some serious trouble. And this is Judah. And this is Jerusalem. 
And it's only going to get worse in Jeremiah. It's not going to get better. Well, I've already read the end of the book. I've already studied. I've already studied the five chapters in, in Lamentations. And yet God sends Jeremiah to say, stop. I was going to work last night. I was going down one of the roads I travel. It wasn't a stop sign. It was a red light. I had the green. Had the green for a while. And I was going right through. This guy ran a red light. Fast. Only God prevented the accident. But you know what? If that guy had not. If that guy had kept going and hit me. When the light said stop. There would have been a lot of consequences. Pain and suffering. And loss. And Jeremiah is a red light. Stop! And this nation is just going right through. I don't care. You take all the pictures of my license plate you want. I ain't going to pay the bill. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to stop. And I'm not even going to have a yellow light. I'm not even going to be cautious. I'm just going to go. And, and Jeremiah... They're coming to an accident. They're coming to pain and suffering and destruction. Because they won't stop. Then said I, O Lord God, this is Jeremiah speaking. Behold, the prophets say unto them, You shall not see the sword, no war, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give you assured peace in this place. They are saying exactly the opposite of what God is saying. To Jeremiah. That's happening in the pulpits in America today. Get wet. Belong to us. Do this. Do that. That's not what God's saying. God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Then the Lord said unto me, Jeremiah, the prophets prophesied lies in my name. Matthew 7 22. It is completely fathomable it is completely within bounds that God says in his word that a man may get up in a pulpit and lie in the name of God and use the Bible and use God's name and Paul tells the Corinthians that Satan has ministers Just because the guy uses the Bible, just because he preaches from a pulpit, because he opens the Bible and reads some scripture does not mean he's of God. He could be a false prophet. I command, wait a minute. The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. False vision and divination is something that does not go with God. Divination, that's using the star gazers and the false magic and all that other junk. One guy, I had a dream, I had a dream. Yeah. Your dream didn't tell you not to be in one specific place at one specific time that your life would end. So much for your dream. If you really had a vision, you would have been told, hey, don't be in this spot or turn around. Or you won't live out the day. Can I make you one of these people that uses divination and fortune telling cards a lot? Do they have life insurance? How many years did they pay for it? Man, if I'm going to know the future, I'm going to know when I'm going to die, and I'll buy life insurance. I think it has to be good for three months. I'll buy life insurance five months before I'm going to die to make sure it's good. Why spend years? I don't know how many years I've paid for my life insurance, and I haven't died yet. But if I have knowledge of the future... And there was one of those booths at the flea market. We go, and I, I poked my head. And, Did you know I was coming? <laughs> they don't know nothing. And think of naught. And the deceit of their heart. See, it's a heart trouble. It's not head, it's heart. 
the heart is we're going to see the heart pretty soon Jeremiah is wicked so God said these people there are two classes of people that God says he says there are ones I've sent Jeremiah and he's not like and there are people I never sent them but they preach and the people love them I mean because the church is big does that mean I, I want to be very careful when walking on that step Jesus in his life had only 12 followers and the 13th was Satan my jury the people go the broad way But then again, my majority of the people, verse 12, they're acting like they're in religion. God said, I'm not going to accept it. Verses 10, 9, and all that. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, prophets that prophesied in my name, and I sent them not. So there, there are prophets that prophesy in God's name, and there are prophets that prophesy in God's name, and God said, I didn't send them. Thus saith the Lord. Jesus is coming in 1914. Oops, Jesus is coming in 1930. Oops, Jesus is coming. Over 140. Oh, sorry. 144,000. One. 144,018. Oh, sorry. We're going to build this house for Abraham. Oh, sorry. Now, I'm going to, you know. That's a false prophet. He is a liar. Why are you following him? And I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land shall we jump to the end of jeremiah and just keep on studying because it's coming you know how they were false prophets because babylon came with sword and they surround the the, the 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 city and caused the famine when a man says something and it doesn't happen he's a false prophet you know what the sorry, you know what the most sorry thing to be about a false prophet? You may not know he's a liar until you're dead. You say, what do you mean, Brother Hayward? The scariest words that you can hear from Jesus Christ outside of go to hell. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we do depart from me? You workers of iniquity, I never, my priests, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never, but my pastor, depart from me. And when you see that priest or that pastor stand guilty before the judge, then you know it's too late. And these are the people that God said don't pray for. These people are so wicked, God allowed these false prophets to go ahead, go, go, go seduce the people. They're not going to listen to Jeremiah. It's only going to get worse in America. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen to them. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them. Their wives and their sons nor their daughters. For I will pour their wickedness upon them. Ezekiel 14 verse 9. For believing the false prophet death. And destruction. Anybody that, that believed Jeremiah lived. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day. And let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach. That's a hole. Hole in a wall. That you don't want. With a very grievous blow. Blow the hole. You know. The hole was, was, was caused by a, a tremendous blow. Force. It's not a hole in a wall that was put there on purpose. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword. 
nowhere safe. And if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine. So you go out in the fields to work. You know, you're going to do your crops, feed the cow. You're going to die by an army. If you're in the city, you're going to die by famine. So the guy that's going to go out and get food is going to be killed, the farmer. The people that want the guy to go out and farm the field, now that he's dead, they're going to want food and they're going to die from lack of food. Meanwhile, the army is going to be out there eating the food that the, the farmer went to go get. They're taking that cow that, that gave birth to a calf. They're having veal and milk and hamburger. While the people in the city are starving to death. You know how much of our food comes from foreign countries? You know, if we ever had another world war in our in other countries that, you know, world war means all the, all the nations battle again. They would say, well, why should we feed America? She's fighting, again. you know, if all the nations cut off the food to America that comes to this country, America would starve. You can't look to California. They got drought. They're they're dying out there. Maybe you won't get the Mexicans picking the lettuce anymore. You sure ain't gonna get American to go pick lettuce and bend down and labor in the dust and dirt, uh, long long hours at minimum wage. No, you gotta pay the guy twenty five bucks to flip a hamburger. Just as yet, make a guy not even go to work and get a check. Yea, both the prophet and the priest, that's the religious, go about into the land that they knew not, Babylon. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Lamentations 5, 26 and 16. Has thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? We are the iniquity and sin. And there is no healing for us. Don't go to the doctor. He can't help you. Don't go to the shrink. He's going to deal with your head. The condition is heart. He can't help you. We look for peace. We, we go to our preachers. Peace, 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 peace. And there is no good. So what is the definition of peace? We look for peace. What do you find? There's no good. Good is peace, according to the Bible. You can have good in, in turmoil and trouble. For a time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our wickedness, Jeremiah is, the nation is it, and iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Jeremiah is right. Ezra and Nehemiah pray these prayers. You can't get to God without praying and repenting and getting right and acknowledge who you are. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. And he's not going to. He's going to leave a remnant, a tiny few, but all the rest. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? You need rain. What's California doing? They need rain. El Nemo all you want. Or can the heavens give showers? Only by God. And why should God bless you if you don't want him? 
Why should God take care of you if you reject him? Why should you get a blessing for cursing? Art not thou he, O Lord our God? Yeah, he is. This is God's people. This is happening to God's people. If God does this to his people who he loves, who he calls his bride, what do you think he's going to do to all the nations? If God doesn't judge the nations for their sin and iniquity, he's going to call up every single Jew and he's going to apologize to them from the Babylon captivity and all those that died by the end of Jeremiah. All the Jews that died by Jeremiah 52, God has to call up and personally apologize to every single one of them. If he doesn't judge the nation. God and Jesus Christ will have to call up every single Jew that Adolf Hitler killed in World War II. And apologize to him if he doesn't judge America. Because Israel was put to shame. Israel was put to chastisement because of a sin and because of their iniquity. And if you think England is going to continue with their sin and witchcraft and their iniquities as a nation, you think God's just going to continue to bless them and put them off into eternity, uh, the new heavens, the new earth, and England. No. God will have to pull everybody up from Jesus, all the Jews in Jesus' ministry, the 33 and a half years in the ministry, and all the Jews from, from up to Titus, 70 A.D., 71 A.D., God will have to pull all those Jews up and apologize to them through the Holy Spirit if he doesn't judge China for all its wickedness and the worshiping of red and worshiping the dragon. God is holy. God is righteous. God has reached all people. When he spoke of the virgin, virgin birth, he said, Oh, earth, 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 here. Listen, just because the Jews are God's people in the Old Testament, and they are, the Gentiles will still be judged on their conscience. And if their name is found in the written in the Lamb's Book of Life, X, I mean, Revelation 20, if their name is in that book, even though they're, they're in the Old Testament, even though they haven't believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though but their faith and their conscience to God, they will go into eternity. But God has put warnings after warnings after warnings to the Jews. And God has fulfilled everything he told them about their sins. Babylon, Titus, the Antichrist coming up, Adolf Hitler, Russia, America, Germany, England, all these nations have been warned by the Bible about a holy and just God and what we're supposed to do about a cup of indignation of the wrath of God poured out upon nations that will not believe the Bible. And if God doesn't judge them, he's got to apologize to every single Jew written in the Bible. And those are not written. He's got to call Daniel, Meshach, Nimgo, and the other guy there. He's got to call them up and say, I'm very sorry for putting you in Babylon. I am very sorry that you went through the furnace of fire. I am sorry that you went through the den of lions because of your sin, because I did not judge Africa for worshiping gods. The Bible says, and I'm not completely right in this verse, but he says, listen, the judgment of God starts first with his people. And it works its way out. Hell is the final judgment of God for those that reject what God told them to do. Hell is full of Bible rejecting sinners. You didn't do what God told you to do in your period of time. You don't read your Bible. God told Noah to preach and build that ark and had all the animals come. Now, could the, could the people in, in uh, North America or the Americas come? Somehow, yes, I believe. 
That door stood open. Anybody could have got in. Anywhere. Before the judgment came, the, the flood, God sent Noah, God sent the ark being built, and God sent those animals. Before Judah goes into captivity, God sends Jeremiah, he sends Isaiah. Before Titus comes, God sent Jesus Christ. And all the apostles went out. Before the Antichrist comes, God has sent the Christians with the Bible from the church age. The guy got angry because of hell today, tonight. What else are you going to be saved from? That's the coming judgment. They didn't like to hear war, famine, and uh, pestilence. Exactly what we just read tonight. The false prophet said there's going to be no famine, there's going to be no war, there's going to be no... And you know what's today in America? There's no hell. How dare you as a Christian, you're turning people away by saying hell, 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 hell. Jeremiah was preaching war, pestilence, and famine, and they didn't like it either. And guess what happened? War, pestilence, and famine. You know what's going to happen? Hell. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it. God said it. That's what it's going to be. Therefore, we will wait upon thee. Patience. It's been over 2,620 years. That's a long wait, and we don't know how long we got to wait even more. God's a very patient God. For thou hast made all these things. What thing? This nation, who we are. Thou hast made the rain. Thou hast made the animals. Thou hast made the judgment that will follow. Remember what it said in Isaiah, and God created evil? Oh, see, that wasn't sin. You know what the evil is coming up for, in the book of Jeremiah for these for these people? Babylon is the evil. What caused the evil? Sin and iniquity. From their sin and iniquity, what's going to happen? War, famine, dirt. That's the evil. And God made that. But they didn't have to suffer. A man does not have to go to hell today. God sends people like us to go warn them. We're Jeremiah's. 